Hello Mystery Report newsletter and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is December 19th, 2020. And this is the video report for newsletter number 19. And before we get started, then I uh, just want to show you, this is the YouTube channel right here. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on here, but there is. Every one of these videos is important. You're going to start, your, these are the, the basic videos from the website. And mystery report number one, number two, number three, number four. This is a breadcrumb trail that's being left for those that subscribe to the mystery report program right here. Get access to the newsletters from 1 onward to 19 where we're at now I'm gonna have a number 20 is gonna be done by the end of this this calendar year right here it's all gonna be put in the 2020 Dropbox folder again leaving you a breadcrumb trail and then those that like Tom and the others that you're gonna see mentioned here those that are Tudor subscribers you click right here then you can send me your questions I answer them and the good stuff gets presented in the newsletter and make the video upload that to help others these are the introductory videos right here begin right here if you want to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight this is where you begin we're going to see the differences between the two Gospels of the New Testament the two churches of the New Testament four baptisms the differences between God and my Father who art in heaven, the differences between Jesus and Christ and Christ Jesus, and then how the mystery diagrams work. That's what I recommend that you do before you ever get your hands on my book, The Mystery Explained, which that's what this is about. That's what Tom wrote about. So just to give you a little overview, then these are radio shows, and this is a 21 um, Bible study series. That was done in 2012 at Awaken Radio. So when you get your hands on one of these newsletters, you can click and start number one. Number two, going to start off with the basics. And then by the time we get to 21, then you're going to have a pretty good idea of what I'm sharing in the Mystery Explained. I can't take no credit for the three witnesses, spirit, blood, and I can't take it. That's God's stuff. God showed it to me. I'm showing it to you guys. Then this is uh, originally before COVID. This was see this stopped right at COVID and I was had a real fast spectrum um, internet connection and I was able to do all this stuff and so these are some chats two hour long chats that we had people subscribers come in ask questions and answer them so this gives you a little more background information too about what's uh, going on with this mystery explain um, newsletter program so Tom he's a a little bit about Tom. We're just using first names. He's a survival group member. He's on the land acquisition committee. He's he's big time one of my big time supporters. Love him to death. He's my brother from another mother, and um, met him well, kind of recently. And uh, so he's going to mention met, meeting me up at McDonald's and things like that. So he's a survival group person, and he's a mystery explained person too. He supports both programs. Appreciate your support very, very much. And I wanted to share this information to help you guys that are looking over our shoulder while we're having these conversations. So this was from November the 19th. And after listening, this is what Tom writes. He says, after listening to your script, to the scripture videos, so that's what I just showed you over at the website. I need to read the mystery explained now to try to understand better how to enter the narrow gate. Before we go any further, then... Narrow gate. These are the verses that you're talking about. Remember, this is kingdom doctrine. But whenever Christ is teaching kingdom doctrine to Israel, to members of the kingdom bride, actually, then he's going to give dispensational truth that applies only to members of the kingdom bride. And then he's woven within his testimony is eternal truth that's true for everybody. The wisdom is knowing the difference. And once you become more developed, you can see the differences between kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine. Then you'll be able to see these things too. So there is application to this 
of what you're saying here. And this is what it says. It says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is narrow, and the way is constricted that leads to life. And there are few that find it so true, so true, so true. So many are blinded by denominationalism. That's when you mix the kingdom and the grace together as if it's one thing, and it's not. It must be separated. Rightly dividing the word of truth means including the two veils. Let me go ahead and show you. Well, that's down in the, let me see which pictures did I pull up. Okay, that's down in the presentation. Okay, so this is the, this is the reference that Tom's making right there. And uh, so there is application, even though we're having to bring that over from kingdom doctrine. And to see the eternal truth in it. So can you send me the P PDF version? See, there's the what you get at the website is the EPUB version. It's the ebook version. But you can use Kindle and things like that. Done by the my publisher. This PDF version was made by me from the originally. Remember, this book was written in 2005. It wasn't published till 2017. So for all those years, all I shared was the PDF version. So that's what I. If you're a, a supporter like Tom, right, you have a, a subscription to the Survivor Group program and to the Tudor program, and you write me and you want a copy of my book, the 9-11 book, I just sent a copy to a supporter this morning, or the Mystery Explained PDF, you just write me and I'm going to send it to you. Appreciate your support very, very much. Okay. So, yes, I attached a copy. So he says, my biggest fear is that time will run out and I will never understand and receive my gift from God on how to enter. Please help. And he says, P.S. I might be one of many that just never understand because I have not been chosen, but will continue until, not that's until we're taken. So I, want, I also want to pull this page. It's very important. Understanding the true definition of mysterion mystery because you have in your mind you're thinking in English you have a definition that you're using we get caught up in semantics so much but you have to think when you're reading the New Testament you're reading like like English that you're reading left to right Old Testament's right to left and you're thinking in ancient Greek not Greek the way that's spoken today ancient Greek the way it was defined terms were defined that's why you need vines and think in terms as they were used 2,000 years ago if you're going to understand the truth of God's Word. Every English Bible that you see is a translation of the Greek, of the Aramaic, and of the Hebrew. And for me, there's no such thing as Latin. That's a translation just like English. Okay, so let's just look at the definition quickly. Primarily that which is known to the musties, the initiated. Okay, I have learned a secret. The New Testament it denotes not the mysterious as with the English word, but that which being outside the range of unassisted natural apprehension can be made known only by divine revelation and is made known in a manner and at a time appointed by God and to those only who are illumined by his spirit. In the ordinary sense, a mystery implies knowledge withheld. Its scriptural significance is truth revealed. Hence, the terms especially associated with the subject are made known, manifested, revealed, preached, understand, and dispensation. One of the most commonly misdefined mis, uh, terms in the Bible. So the, uh, the definition given above may be best illustrated by the following passage. The mystery which has been hid in all the ages, hid from all the ages and generations, but now has been manifested to the saints. Colossians 1.26 that's really close to what you're going to read in Matthew chapter 6, I mean Matthew, Romans chapter 16, verse 25, when Paul is describing my gospel, his gospel. That's according to the revelation of the mystery. And remember, Paul uses this term 20 times in his 13 epistles. The combined letters of Peter, John, and James use the term zero times. They're describing the fulfillment of prophecy. And Peter warns about distorting the wisdom given him, Paul, Second Peter chapter 3, start at verse 14. Distorting the wisdom given him means adding it, trying to add it to prophecy, trying to add it to kingdom doctrine. 
whenever they have to remain separate. The wisdom given him that, that people distort as they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. We have to be very careful how this is God's stuff. This mystery, this is God's stuff. God's wisdom hidden right in plain sight for those that he anoints to see it. God has to anoint it. Just reading the book, the mystery explains, not going to make you see it. God has to anoint you to see it. There's, this has done. This is done like the, this truth was was revealed to me by prayer, decades of prayer and crawling on my hands and knees, and then God showed it to me. The, the biggest, the biggest ball of light that He ever showed me was sitting in my flat, in London, in the early '90s, and writing Dr. Clifford Denton, and having a vision like and in the middle of a sentence trying to explain the truth from first John chapter 5 start at verse 6 and had to put my pen down three days later three days of prayer and on that saw the light changed me I've been sharing people that, uh, this with people ever since okay so let's get back over to here and so there is a possibility God isn't just doesn't chose you to see it you're not going to see it that doesn't mean it's not there it is very very real this is a good presentation here for people because this is going to give you an overview of the mystery explain what it is so Tom wrote me this when I gave him this reply back on the um, November the 14th thanks for writing the PDF version is attached to the email see God's wisdom using his three witnesses of spirit blood and water is simple for those with spiritual eyes from God allowed to see the beauty of God's knowledge and wisdom in Christ God's incarnate word and son is surpassed only by its simplicity you are a god incarnate here as a man where singularity hosts are broken into three witnesses of spirit blood and water and I pulled up some diagrams to help you see that this is in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth the diagram that i'm about that i'm showing you over there is the precursor to this one. This was diagram number four. That other one's number three. Singularities. Singularities. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Singularities. You can't see my Father who art in heaven. You can't see the Son. You can't see the Holy Spirit. They're all the same thing. They are heaven. That's where my Father who art in heaven gets his name. The Son and the Holy Spirit are all one. The same thing. Similar to Adam in Genesis 2.7 can't see Eve in Genesis 2 7 you can't see her seed either they're all inside of Adam spirit blood and water Adam Eve seed father son Holy Spirit God to come God who is God who was these three witnesses are everywhere in the scriptures and you can see them right here you see this is God that created the heaven and the earth this is the three witnesses of God right here God to come, God who is, God who was. Three witnesses of the word, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. See, my Father art in heaven is right here. The Almighty is right here. On the other side of this veil that's right here. This is the same layout as the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. And you can see yourself here. Your spirit, your soul, your body. Same pattern. Okay, so God, heaven and earth. This is all things. You take this one verse, Genesis 1, 1. The same verse is laid out in Tabernacle 4 in John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, because in the infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made by Him. And without Him, there was not anything made, all things, that was made. This right here is the word of John 1.1, 1, 1, which is heaven of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Same thing. It's right here. And it's created. God in the infinite realm had something to do. He had to fix Adam. Adam's dead in the infinite realm. How is he going to fix him? He's going to make him again through his word that made him in the infinite realm in the first place. Adam's over here in the infinite realm, dead, split wide open by Satan, the satanic rebellion. So God says to his word, word, go over there and make Adam inside yourself 
again. So in reality, this is an infinite shell. This is the white of the egg, and this is the yolk of the egg. All things held together in him. Colossians 1, 18 through 20. Okay. So God, heaven, and earth, all things, are all singularities. You cannot see God to come, God who is, God who was, who testify for the Almighty in Revelation 1, 8. A lot of people miss this, but I want to show it to you. I thought I had this. This is 1 Corinthians 15. This is, let me see here. I am Alpha. I am Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come. The Almighty. The three witnesses that I just showed you right there. That's the three witnesses. God to come, who is, who was, and who is to come. The three witnesses of the Almighty right there and then it's easier once you see that from that perspective it's easier for you to see what's happening here in the beginning Genesis 1 26 God said let us this is God who is speaking he's speaking to us God who was and God to come make man in our image according to our likeness that image is triune spirit blood and water Whenever you give all spirit witnesses the number one, all blood witnesses the number two, and all water witnesses the number three, you're going to realize one plus two plus three equals six, the number of man. True. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds, and the, the what this is supposed to be is beasts of the field. See, there's three witnesses right here. The fish of the sea are the spirit witnesses. I'm sorry, the fish of the sea, the water witnesses, obviously. The birds of the sky are the spirit witnesses, and the livestock, the beasts of the field, that's the blood witnesses. These three witnesses appear throughout the Bible. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Peter, John, and James, to, do you notice that these three, this trio, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, three witnesses of Satan in the infinite realm. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Man, spirit witness. Woman, water witness. Seed, blood witness. The blood witness always expands. It always enlarges. It's always begotten. The only begotten son is the blood witness. Heaven is begotten between the heavens and the earth. But you see the pattern. I'm telling you, you see them everywhere. So God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Subdue it. To these in Part of the reason I want to bring this up here is because in the third article down the newsletter, we're going to get into this part right here about what God's doing right here. So I want to bring this down and get you through this post. That was So you can't see my Father right in heaven in Genesis 1-1 because he's in heaven with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Son. You can't see the, the Holy Spirit. They haven't yet been... God's word hasn't yet been broken, hasn't been sacrificed. The Holy Spirit comes out, the, then you have the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Father overshadows the Holy Spirit, the Son is begotten. Luke one thirty five explains it. Um, so you can't see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit because they are all testifying as three into the one. First John five eight. The heavens, the heaven and the earth, the heavens, the heaven. Like the only begotten Son, Genesis 1 8. And earth are testifying in Genesis 1 6 through 8. The three into the one, also in Genesis 1 1. Until broken into three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. This is Genesis 1 6 through 8. This is the earth from Genesis 1 1. It's still a singularity. This is the layout of the three witnesses of the Bible. Spirit, blood, water. This is the veil that must stay intact. There are 39 books here, 13 books here, 13 books here. This book right here has features, characteristics of water and blood, the book of Acts. It's the extra book of the Bible. It is the most unique book of the Bible, the book of Acts, showing the transition from water to blood. Peter starts out, day of Pentecost. Paul ends up going to the Gentiles with our gospel. The gospel of the grace of God, that is, according to the revelation of the mystery. 
the mystery being revealed. So this is the soul. Paul epistles are the soul of the Bible. It's protected by these veils. If you're a water witness in the Old Testament, you can't see in here. If you're a prophet in the New Testament, you can't see in here. Only those called by God, members of Christ's body. Those who have their angel half and their man half put back together again. Those that are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus with Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, start at 4. And this is the tabernacle made in the same exact pattern of what I'm showing you here. Just like the earth, heaven, and heavens. Just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit witness, blood witness, water witness. Labor of water. Water baptism. Brazen altar. That's where you put the sacrifice. You wash in the water. Then you can go through the veil. Then you, you have to burn this incense too. And you have to put oil on different places of your body. The oil signifying entrance into the spirit witness part. Only one time a year is this veil broken for a man to walk through. And there's a rope tied around his leg in case he isn't clean. If he's not clean, he's going to drop dead going through the veil. They have to drag him out and get somebody else. Just cast lots again. Pull, pull another lot out of the hat. That's, what, that's the way they do things. That's the way they did things. Being chosen by lot. That ensured everybody was ready to go behind the, uh, the veil one time a year. Okay, so God, ha God has hidden his wisdom in the tabernacle of Moses and the temple. Where you see, bo where you see, both have the image of a man, and if you look down on the temple, it looks like a man. Even down on the sidewalks, that are the arms, the five sidewalks that break off on each are the five fingers. And you look down upon it with a holy spirit, uh, with a spirit, the holy of holies, the soul in the holy place. That's the holy place in the middle, and. The body, which is the court. Eventually, the court and the Holy of Holies are going to disappear. There's only going to be one witness by the time we get to the ages of the ages. Six has the number of a man because the spirit witnesses all have the number one. I explained that to you already. The blood witnesses all have two. The thing is about the blood witnesses, they come last because you have to take the, the spirit in the water and mix them together first. And then the blood witness is begotten. So it's the last that's made first, which means ahead of the water witness. You keep hearing the first is last and last is first. That's what Christ is talking about. Blood witnesses always come last, but they're made first behind the spirit witness. So that's how they have the number two. So here's just one of the charts in the mystery explained. Singularities, spirit witnesses, begotten blood witnesses, and the water witnesses. You see wisdom, for example, is the fruit. Wisdom is the fruit. The blood witness that's begotten from the seed of faith, seed of faith being sown, and then the shoot growing, which is the knowledge, and then the fruit is the wisdom. Three-step process. It's laid out for you in steps in the chapters of the Mystery Explained. Okay, so in every case, the begotten blood witness testifies for the original singularity. In the left column, broken into three witnesses of spirit, that comes first. The water comes second, but made last in blood. Begotten last, but put ahead of the water witness. So the spirit witness always comes first. So when you hear that statement about the last that's made first, it's after the spirit witness. It just changes the order of the begotten blood witness that comes last. And then he's made first ahead of the water witness. So, for example, the gospel of the kingdom. Is that on the other chart? Looks like it is. The gospel of the kingdom for our gospel. For the gospels. The gospel of the kingdom was presented first to Israel, and it was rejected. And then Paul was raised up with our gospel of the grace of God, the blood witness that was made first. So the kingdom dispensation, the kingdom period that's coming, it's being held in abeyance. It's going to start with the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord actually started with John the Baptist. God put it on the back burner, and he put Paul in the dispensation of God's grace first. Same pattern that I'm showing you right here, the blood witnesses have to be put in front of the water witnesses. If you think about it, the restoration of all things is talking about the restoration of all things on the earth. But before you can restore the things on the earth, you have to restore heaven. That's what we're being called for. Satan's dominions are being chained and we are being glorified so we can occupy those heavenly seats and help Elijah restore all things from heaven. Those that are looking for an earthly kingdom, you're going to be disappointed. That's for water witnesses. We're the heavenly part. The heavenly, our citizenship is in heaven.
already. We're already seated there in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, start at 4. And the members of the Antichrist body are already in the lake of fire. They're already there. They're already there. These people run to the underground ark cities. They're already burning in the lake of fire right now, just like we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. They're already there. It's just when the rapture happens, there's the rapture of the righteous, the mystery of Christ, and a rapture of the unrighteous, the mystery of iniquity. That's the antithesis series of doctrines. So you, the living God's living word is multidimensional. And when Paul is teaching about the mystery of Christ, everything he says, every little thing he says, he's also describing the mystery of iniquity. You just have to realize that the book opens up to be multidimensional in what is being said. And what the truth is, what was really being said, is scripture and the creation are saying the exact same things, the exact same testimony, but you have to interpret the evidence of both properly. So when you think there's a, a contradiction in the Bible, there's no contradiction in the Bible, guaranteed. But people make, they create contradictions by misinterpretation. So you have to listen. God talks to us, speaks to us through his living word. That living word is not only the living scriptures, it's his word incarnate in us. The spirit of the word in us communicating with the word of God's word. That becomes communion. That becomes, that makes what's inside of your soul a spring of information that's testifying constantly all the time. You just have to hear it. Okay, so um, read through the mystery, explain. Oh, wait a minute. In every case, the begotten blood witness testifies for the original singularity in the left column, broken into three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood. Each witness testifies about itself and the other two witnesses in the same row, and also testifies about every witness in the same column. So in other words, the priesthood, Moses, David's throne, the earth, Holy Spirit, they are all testifying about each other. And Moses is testifying about Christ and Elijah. Mount of Transfiguration right here. See it? Mount of Transfiguration. These are the same exact witnesses as the garden. Adam, Eve, the Lord God. Who made them? Who's the Lamb of God? The Lord God and the Lamb of God, same person. And in each case, this part, the offspring, the soul, these are all begotten. Every single one of them. And the singularity came first, and then the water witness was pulled out, and then the spirit witness overshadowed the water witness to beget this column. Right here. And so it's the blood witness that testifies for the, origi the original singularity. The Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Father is going to disappear. The Holy Spirit is going to disappear too. The Son is going to continue to enlarge. The Son testifies for the original singularity, the Word. That's why Christ is called the Word made flesh. He's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one person. Okay, so this is what was written originally. Then Tom turned around and write me again. Same day. This is uh, about 15 minutes later. He said, just finished the first email and had one more question. Jet, uh, you have put all your eggs in one basket to go underground to survive um, the vaccine and the roundups. My understanding is this must be done because you must survive everything to be raptured. Is that correct? And this is going to be 100% correct. The only way to be counted among the living so that you are meet the Lord in the air at the sound of that trumpet is to be counted among the living. And you see that what they're doing. They're sending out this genocide herald strain and then the mutagen strain and then the recombinant strain is going to attack the world and they're going to put the poison that they need inside the vaccine. So you can see what's happening. So my job, I was living in a metro area with 3 million people. No, sir, not safe. Got out of there, and now I'm living in a place, after moving around, scurrying around, then I'm living in a place that has four houses within a square mile. In the middle of the country, on the North American Craton, I can see it coming from the East Coast and the West Coast, from a rural area, rural country type area making lots of friends and of the locals and of survival group members and uh, including Tom from where he's from. 
Okay, so my first goal is to prepare physically and spiritually the best of my God-given abilities and to help as many people as possible along the way to earn the greatest heavenly rewards possible for good deeds done in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5.10 Being among those who are who are alive and remain when the body uh, is caught up to meet the Lord in the air is an important part of my goal and mission for myself and others for whom Christ died. Achieving that mission means relocating away from the coast, but that's just what I explained to you. This plan allows me the opportunity to work with others for devising the best survival strategies possible where Christians are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Those left behind inherit our survival supplies. Being in the right place at the right time to increase the chances of survival for everybody that's involved. So what we're talking about here is mostly Christian people that are working together to get a, build a place, an environment for the children and for those left behind. That's what we're doing it for. That's what I'm doing it for. And then I'm standing before God and there's no question about, well, okay, you say you see the black star coming? Where's the evidence? Uh, that's what all these newsletters and stuff are about. Waking people up and everything. Every word, every syllable that you see in the black star news reports and this report is to help people physically and spiritually the best of my ability. And God wants to reward me for it, but I have to have the works. You're looking at it right here. So I could just as easily sit on my hands in Florida and just say, well, I'm going to be raptured. Everything's going to be just fine. Yeah. And then COVID comes, kills me. I'm about to be 63. And then I, I, I want to be alive and rain whenever it gets here. So doing everything possible to, to just exactly as I explained it to you above. And he says, uh, when will people be able to enter heaven if we are not raptured? Oh, uh, when will people, if they're not raptured, I say yes, but not until the end of the age. So he asked when, and I answered, uh, will. I didn't see the wind here in my own mind. But uh, not until the end of the age. One of the most common misconceptions held among professing Christians is that everyone not saved by our gospel is going to hell in the lake of fire. That is not true. The reality is that God has dispensational relationship with a myriad of hosts. That includes members of Christ's body, chosen and called by the gospel. That includes Paul, uh, Paul Barnabas, Titus, right? Okay, this... The, this is the blood witness body called by blood witness gospel. Then there are the kingdom disciples, part of the kingdom bride, called by the gospel of the kingdom. That includes Peter, John, James, Cornelius, okay, which is the water witness gospel. Now you go to Matthew 24, verse 14, and it says that the gospel of the kingdom is going to the whole world, and then the end, then the end shall come. That's because Elijah is about to appear at our rapture. The Holy Spirit's going to dump us off with Christ, and then return to the earth, and Elijah's going to stand at the banks of the Jordan River, okay, on the west side, and he's going to begin, just like John the Baptist, baptizing, the power of the Holy Spirit's going to be on him, he's going to be baptizing, and whenever he baptizes them, the Holy Spirit's going to be on him, they're going to be able to raise the dead, and he's, the big giant pile of humanity is going to build on the west side of the Jordan River until the last number is called, the last person is there. And then Elijah's going to turn around and he's going to use his mantle and smack the banks. And the, it's going to be like dry land right in front of him. The whole millions of people are going to go over into the promised land. That's going to happen. Only after we're taken, the Holy Spirit is busy working with us. He's getting ready to del d deliver us like a sealed letter at the moment of the rapture that comes just before the destruction of 1 Thessalonians 5, start at 1. Paul describes the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, at the end of the chapter. And then, so we're going to be taken, boom, and then the sudden destruction happens right behind it. It's going to be a springtime event. Okay. So then you have the regular citizens of heaven. This includes the elect from Matthew 24, 29 through 31, obeying the eternal gospel from Revelation 14, 6. There's a whole bunch of people going to heaven that are not members of Christ's body. They're not members of the kingdom, right? Those are the kings, the rulers, the judges. We judge the world and the angels from, as being members of the Lamb's body in the center of the throne. And then Peter, John, and James, and those that join him during the day of the Lord that's coming up, early rains and late rains. They're going to be standing on that sea of glass. They are the intercessors for everybody in heaven. Cabillions of people. And they're not people, they're hosts. They're heavenly hosts. And they have access to the Lamb through Peter, John, and James. That's the royal priesthood. That's what they're supposed to do from the sea of glass. We're already in Christ. We're already in the Lamb. Our heaven, our Angel half and our man half's already been put back together. Peter, John, and James are not that way. Peter, John, and James are the man part, the man host, 
their angel half is testifying from the invisible sea behind the lamb you don't hear about them it's only taught in the types they have their angel half and their man half put back together by participating in the marriage supper of the lamb their angel half and they walk right into the lamb they become one just like it's already happened for us through the gospel they're doing it by works we're doing it by God's grace two different pl programs that we have to keep separate mixing together defiles both the Paul describes different groups in the second chapter in his epistle to the Romans saying will we repay each person according to his deeds those who by perseverance in doing um, good seek glory honor and immortality he will give eternal life but to those who are self-serving who do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness he will give wrath and indignation so there's going to be a judgment and some are just they're gonna be able to go to heaven not gonna be members of Christ's body not gonna be members of the kingdom bride they're just citizens of heaven tons of them way more of those than there are members of Christ's body we're special we're called to judge the world and the angels Peter John and James they're special intercessors priest so nobody in heaven just goes up and just chats with the lamb they can't do that they have to come through the water witnesses the priesthood they explain everything like an attorney and then the attorney speaks to the lamb and then they get their judgment that's the way it works very similar situation to David in the kingdom and the priesthood the way they serve the people it's all the, God teaches us how it's going to be through the types of the kingdom David's kingdom is a good example of that okay so God's only calling some of us to judge the world and the angels. The vast majority are citizens of heaven. They're heavenly citizens whom Peter, John, and James provide priestly intercession from the sea of glass while members of Christ's body do the judging. We judge the world and the angels. The, re the reason we, we judge the world and the angels is because they're two halves of the same thing. Immortal soul. Anybody walking around in heaven, their angel half and their man half has been put back together again. The sea of glass is the exception. There's a veil around that, that baby. Okay, so as members of the Lamb's body in the center of the throne, then while members of Christ's body are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, according to the mystery of Christ, another dispensation household is is gathered simultaneously. My apologies for the background noise. We're expecting company and the puppies are getting a little restless. Okay, so God's calling some of us to be members of Christ's body. He's calling some of us to be members of the kingdom bride. He's calling us, body of Christ members, through the gospel of the grace of God. He's calling members to the kingdom bride through the gospel of the kingdom. He's going to continue that through the day of the Lord that's about to start. So many people believe that we're at the end of the age and the day of the Lord is only starting. It's about to begin. It began with John the Baptist. God put it on the back burner. Now he's about to start it up again. And we're going to see everything that happens during the day of the Lord from heaven. Okay, so is there just no hope to make it to heaven or the only way is to be chosen by God already and the only way is to be raptured? Very confusing on what I really should be doing. So, so the thing to realize is that we are doing things that have already been done. People think that this is a realm of choice. This is not the realm of choice. The realm of choice is the infinite realm where you're a God. You already made the choice. This is the, that's the cause in the infinite realm. This is the effect here. This is where we do things for the third time. So we're doing things already done as our choices were made in God's infinite realm where you are God's, which is the only realm that is real. Heaven and earth are both created. And mere incarnations of God's word and Adam being restored from death in God's infinite realm. Which is the reason that heaven and earth were created in the first place. For me, understanding and sharing the truth of God's living and active word are two most important tasks to be completed on this earth. My wish is that more people were interested in seeing God's wisdom as you and your interest are in the extreme minority. That has to do with that narrow gate. That's just the way it is. Then, my duty is to help people wake up about the destruction that will come suddenly from 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-5, which includes tracking the black star using the earth pangs, the birth pangs, I should say, the earth changes, which is what the Project Black Star investigation is all about. 
So then um, Tom thanks me. He said, would you say that it's okay to defend ourselves when the military comes for us? Identify threats, create contingencies, and execute those plans on time. Those remaining, those remaining in the large cities near the coast will face the dilemma first. And those in the center of the country working together in rural areas will face the challenges last. The common denominator for neutralizing our three primary threats, Black Star, Super Plume, and the Bioweapon, is to get out of the way. Which is why I am writing to you now from the Ozarks in the center of the country where there are only three or four houses within a square mile. The likely scenario will be for the sheeple to roll up their sleeves and take the vaccine or be led off to the FEMA CDC camps. The, uh, those are the internment camps. The, um, the objective for me, again, is to be counted among the living when the final trumpet sounds and we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Therefore, anything that we do to extend our time here helps to achieve that mission. And the general rule is, as the, the uh, organizer of survival groups around the world, is that we obey all the laws. We do not speed or anything. We follow the rules, the laws be law-abiding citizens, right up until the time the crap hits the fan and is us against Mad Max. Whenever that happens, then we have to do what we have to do in order to protect us. When it's the Wild West, then that's what we have to do to protect ourselves and our families. Oh, my apologies again for the ruckus going on in the background. I think it's all good now, though. So then, with the time remaining, then uh, this, is, this was sent in by Amber and with nano silver questions and she's asked a question at the end there about you or God. So to make this simple at the top, then Amber was at the website right over here. And a lot of you guys have this same question. You're asking this a lot. You're listening to this lady. She's saying that your nano silver, her nano silver is clear and tasteless. And what you're getting from me is not clear and tasteless, is it? That's explained by in the instructions, when you get the eight pages, it's, it's explained. You can get the one nanometer size, two nanometer size nano solar. It is way expensive. If, if I, in order to outfit the lab to make that, it would be not affordable. So this is Doug's solution, Doug's formula. And it's the best bang for the buck, gives you five nanometer size. It's chemical reaction, silver nitrate, capping agent, activating agent. And best bang for the buck on the internet. Really, really great stuff. So long shelf life is capped. Doug says keep it in a dark place. And at room temperature and in the dark, and it'll stay for shelf life 20 years. So it is not even comparable to colloidal silver, in my view. You have to be careful using colloidal silver, especially in young people, the, because the particle sizes are 80 nanometers, 100 nanometers, where what you're going to get out of my lab is 5 nanometers. Okay, so it breaks the 10 nanometer barrier you need to get inside the brain, you need to go in the nooks and crannies of your body, and it has a light yellow tint to it, but that's normal. That's when you get the instructions. It's, I just quoted right from Doug. Okay, but then I want to get to this final part. She says, on another note, I know that we will be judging and ruling in eternity. But what verse says that we will be gods? So I heard that, you might have heard that out of context. Perhaps heard that out of context. So it's not that we will be gods, it's that we are gods. The truth is not that we will be gods. It's a small, it's a small G. There's, no, the only, there's only one God. Big G, God. We are Gods that he created in the infinite realm over here. This is the only realm that's real. This is the only realm that's real. This is created, heaven and earth. That's what Christ was saying when he quoted Psalms 82.6. He quoted David. And he says, Has it not been written in your law? I said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came... And the scripture cannot be nullified or can't be broken. Are you saying from him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? So Christ says right here, I am the Son of God. He's the Son of God. God's word made flesh. He's one with God in the infinite realm, but he was told to incarnate, to become heaven, so that Adam could be made in him again. This is created, this is created. 
I know it sounds like blasphemy, doesn't it? An incarnation. Heaven is an incarnation. Your life there is an incarnation. Your life here is an incarnation. Yes, you're a God, but you're the incarnation of a God. That's standing in judgment in the infinite realm. In God's courtroom right now. Either as a victim or as a perpetrator. You're either a child of the day, son of the light. Or you're a son of disobedience, son of darkness. And there's far more sons of darkness here than the sons of light. Far more of them. They're more being judged here. Some of us are victims. Some of us are good guys, white hats. Some of us are bad guys, black hats. Uh, that's just the way. That's just the way that it is. So I give, I show the, just what I showed you before. See, this is kind of connected together. What I was showing me, uh, what I was showing you before. So we are gods over here in the infinite realm. We have done these things, fighting Michael the Archangel and the Dragon, with Michael the Archangel against the Dragon, right here. We've done these things for the second time. This realm is the third time. Spirit, blood, water. Third time. We're doing here what we did here, what we did here already. Okay. So then this came in um, yesterday from Doug. 9-11 book and old earth beliefs. So he says, a fairly new subscriber, NanoSilver user. And I am trying to learn more about your research and watching your your uh, older videos I have a couple of questions is the book that you wrote about 9-11 incident available for viewing or purchase and this is the same answer as Tom wanted the mystery explained PDF version you can get this PDF version just be a subscriber some of you are writing me I got to check my emails at the website tarot at tarot03.com and some of you are, are like YouTube subscribers or um, Brighteon subscribers and you're asking me for my book you have to be a newsletter subscriber, supporter of the research, right over here. In other words, you have come down and click one of these four buttons. You're your tutor guy, mystery report tutor guy, send me your questions, like, just like Tom's doing. If you want to be a mystery report, just a newsletter guy, I'll give you access to the Dropbox folder link. You have access to all these newsletters that have all the video links that have questions and answers and things like that to help you. And no matter where you subscribe, you're going to get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, attached to the newsletter, the um, newsletter, Dropbox, folder, link, notification, email, for free. Happy to give it to you. God's stuff. It's really, really cool stuff. Okay. So this is a subscriber. So you are one of these subscribers or you subscribe a lot of people. They subscribe to the, the just like Tom, Black Star, Survival Group subscriber, and you're a tutor group subscriber. So you support me with your subscriptions, $100 per year. You write me and you want a copy of my book, you want a copy of the PDF or something, you want something like that, then I'm giving it to you. Because you're supporting me and I'm supporting you. Okay, so if you want to have the benefit of me paying for your nanosilver shipments, you can write to me and I'll send you copies of my book for this or that or whatever you want, then I'm happy to do that for you. You're supporting me, I'm supporting you. So I encourage you, to be a Black Star newsletter subscriber or a Mystery Report subscriber, it's just twenty-five dollars a year, two dollars, two bucks a month, and then you get benefits. You can you can write me at the special email address, not this one. This one I get to once a week lately. Just once a week, I've been able to get there. I'm, I'm sorry, and it breaks my heart whenever a newsletter subscriber doesn't follow the instructions in your Dropbox photo link notification email because it says never ever ever write me here. This is where everybody in the world writes me. You have a special email address, special way to contact me. Cindy, you just did that recently. You subscribed and then you should write me here and you notice I didn't answer you. It wasn't deliberate. It's just when you have thousand newsletter supporters, then they're writing you and your emails are just keep coming in. That's where you have to spend your time, people that are supporting you. And then Wednesdays and Thursdays are the newsletter and the video presentation and so much work I get behind. And then it's usually on Friday or Saturday that I can get to this email address right here. That's just pretty much the way that it works. Okay, so if you want the uh, free stuff, you want me to be your personal tutor, you want access to me daily through emails, then you're going to be one of these subscribers right here. That separates you from the herd of being a YouTuber or something like that. Okay. So, the 9-11 book and the old beliefs. Okay, he's a fairly new subscriber. 
and nano silver user that means you're smart you're identifying threats create contingencies okay so the book you wrote is it available yes and I already sent that to you okay so the PDF version is attached to the email then uh, oop, number two I should indent it here my apologies as a fellow Christian relatively new believer uh, what uh, why do you make references to things happening hundreds of thousands even mi millions of years ago so then what I ask is please be specific whenever you like in a video when I say something in a video you put the link to the video and you say at the two minute mark two minutes and eight seconds you said this and I want to know why that helps me with context because I make a lot of statements and look how many videos I make how much commentary I write each week Oops. but this is generally what I'm talking about the six day people from Genesis 1 26 through 28 remember I mentioned that earlier about God who is God who was God who was to come God who is is speaking to us God who is is speaking to the other two witnesses in right here so the Aborigine races the the Oriental races they okay? you may not realize it but 15 percent of the people in the United States have negative blood 15 percent have negative blood the percentage in China is less than one percent if it goes on for eternity it probably wouldn't reach one percent almost everybody has positive blood so 50 percent of the world population have O positive or A positive blood. So if you were just to guess somebody, you'd guess them A or O positive. You have a 50-50 shot. Okay, and the negative bloods you get way down, but in some countries it's it's the almost none are negative, none like China. But the Oriental races are like that. You notice that they have beard, they're beardless. You notice that they're, they're they just seem to be a little bit different because they are different. They're evolved races. Six day people from Genesis 1 26 to 28 that I already read to you. They have special dispensation directly with the Almighty, directly with the Almighty. Seventh day people are different. Seventh day people is where the negative blood comes from. Relatively recent. Okay, looks to me like just by the historical data, it's about 12,500 years, not five or six thousand years like most people want to interpret the Bible. So the American Indian races. The, the naked uh, natives out in the jungle, right? You notice that they're beardless. You notice that they, have, they all have RH positive blood, and they, they are evolved out of the waters of Genesis 120. So whenever the argument about evolution or creation, is, it's both. There are different races here. Then you have the people there in the spaceships, people that took Elijah to heaven, Second Kings chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Okay, they came down in the chariot of fire, and they took, Elijah to heaven. How do you think that they made it from the earth to heaven in a spaceship? Because they're God's custodians. The amphibious and the reptilian races have been here for millions of years. And they're all around us right now. They're getting ready to clean up the mess when the black star leaves. You're seeing more and more reports that there's big giant stuff that's around there. One of their ships could destroy this planet easily. One button. Push one button. Boom. We're done. We're done. But they're God's custodians. They have underground cities underneath the oceans. They've been. I know it sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But it explains all the evidence that we're we're saying okay so it's uh, his belief that uh, we live in a new earth now maybe only five or six thousand years old based on what the Bible teaches us no that's not the what the Bible teaches that's the way that the Bible is being interpreted but the scriptures and the creation say exactly the same thing when you interpret both properly so I give a little bit of information so we're doing things already done already been through that in this presentation we are gods we're doing things already done we're good guys in the infinite realm we were victimized by Satan that's the way things happen here we're fighting with Michael the Archangel on the good side rather than on the dark side where the dragon is being defeated okay so the heavenly battle that's described in Revelation 12 was initiated before Genesis 2 4 that war started before Genesis 2 4 it's still going on it's just frozen motionless from our perspective because Heaven is almost infinite. The, the hosts there are interacting like constellations from our perspective. Libra, uh -huh, right? And Scorpio, gigantic. But you can't even see they're moving. They're moving, but you, we can't see it because we're so teeny. This, this earth of Genesis, uh, this earth of Genesis 1 1 is like a grain of sand compared to heaven that's almost infinite and to the infinite realm that is infinite earth 
The new heaven and new earth have to be remade hundreds of times before the, the size differential is bridged. And then heaven and earth, the time will be, re will be relatively closer than it is right now. There's just so much difference. That's what Christ is saying when he says that, that among those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist because he's an incarnation of Adam who represents this entire universe. But then he turns around and says that the least that's in the kingdom of heaven, who is Peter, is greater than him because Peter in the almost infinite realm is almost infinite. So Peter being the smallest in heaven of Genesis 1-1, almost infinite, is, is infinitely bigger. Almost infinitely, really, but infinitely bigger than this entire universe. I know it sounds kind of wild, but that's what the types teach. And some of us can see these things by the Spirit, where words are poor vehicles of expression. Believe me, poor vehicles of expression compared to what we can see by the Spirit when our spiritual eyes are just opened up and what we can convey using words, poor vehicles of expression. Okay, so... The things that are done in the infinite realm have, are done in heaven. Michael, and the dragon, his head's been severed, but it hasn't yet hit the ground yet. It's falling. His tail, he's falling. His tail his strike is going across the sky. And as it does, it's knocking those sons of darkness down into this earth realm where they're occupying the heavenly places the darkness of darkness, Ephesians 6.12. The evil forces of this darkness is what they are. Some of them are incarnate here on the earth. That's where the bad guys come from, the House of Rothschild, the Trilateral Commission, all these people. They were part of the Satanic Rebellion in the Infinite Realm, and they're doing things already done. They're here to destroy us. The genocide that's in the vaccine, the, the genocide that's in the Herald strain, the mutagen strain, they, we've already done this before. It's going to be done again at the end of the age. A strain is going to be released that will kill every microbe of life on this planet, unless the day was shortened. So this is a soul version of that. It's not the exact same thing. It's a soul like your soul overshadows the body, but it's not the body. But there are similarities to what's going on there. Okay, so the bottom line here is the truth is exactly what God's Word says without creating a single contradiction. Any seeming contradiction identified in God's Word is created by man's misinterpretation, requiring repentance. So many people, um, they define... Repentance as a change of mind, that's not what it is. It's a change of something in the mind. It's a change of perception. It's turning your back on that preconceived notion. That's what we do when we repent, which Paul does not use the word repent in any of his letters, by the way. But he does use repentance three times. And salvation can, uh, repentance can lead to salvation, but it's obedience to the gospel. That's what makes us, that's the, the common denominator in what I'm sharing here and what with Tom. That the way that we make it into heaven through that narrow, that narrow gate is obedience to the gospel. God sends the preacher to us and preaches the gospel. We obey it and then we are baptized into Christ's body on the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago. Christ dies, we die with him. God raises Christ from the dead, he raises us from the dead. Christ is seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we're right there with him participating in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the mystery of Christ. Has nothing to do with the gospel of the kingdom, though. That's something totally different. Totally different. So that's what I want to share with you. I want to keep it around an hour if possible. Lots of information put together in this uh, newsletter number 19. It's going to be uploaded to the Dropbox folder. And uh, this video is going to, the link is going to be put right here that goes with it. And this is part of the breadcrumb trail from 001 now to 019. Appreciate your support very, very much. And I hope that you'll get more information right here at the website. Identify your threats, create contingencies, execute on time so that you are among the living whenever the final trumpet sounds. That's what I'm looking for. Appreciate your support again. Get more information here at the website and see you on the next update report.